In this video on Open Framework Super Basics, we do more of the things that you asked for. Russell P wrote to me in the comments and said, how do I take that 2D particle system example and make it look like fireworks? And I had to think about it, and this is one way that you could do it. So in this video, we take our two-dimensional particle system, we move it into three dimensions, we make it responsive to keyboard, and we add a 3D cam in, so we can fly around and see our exploding fireworks in three dimensions. Hi, welcome back. Open Framework Super Basics. Russell P left a comment in response to the simple 2D particle system that I did a video of saying, I really like this. How could we make it look more like fireworks? And, and that got me thinking because we, we set up a particle emitter um, that could move stuff around and uh, generate particles using a particle class that was in 2D. And I thought, yeah, let's give that a go. And had a hack, and this is in response to Russell's questions. Um, and hopefully this is some interest to a couple of other people that said that they liked the particle system and wanted to do more with it. And this is to extend that a little bit from 2D into 3D. What I did is... Hacked it. And every time you hit the space key, you make explosions of particles and they obey gravity in 3D. And we can use the easy cam to go and see our exploding firework particles. So coming to the code, in our project, in the header file, in the previous video, I made a simple particle class. So it was a particle class, one particle that had the ability to have a color, a size, a position, a force acting on it, and a direction that it was traveling. So we could make a particle, push it in a direction, and know what force was acting on it and the velocity it was moving in. And then I gave it two methods. Update, so we'd say the particle update where you are and it would look at what force was acting on it and decide where it should go next and then draw. And we had the ability to make a particle and have it have a color. So what I did is, rather than having the force, the position and the direction just being an X and Y, let's, let's add to it and give it a Z direction. So we moved from having a GLM vector 2 object, so X and Y, to a VEC3 object, X and Y and Z. So we have a force acting in three dimensions, a position in three-dimensional space, and a direction in three-dimensional space. And the only additional thing is, I said, when we make our particle using our constructor, which is how we build a new particle, we've defined the particle in the class, but now when we want to make one, we can either just say make a particle and supply it with basic information it needs. But in this instance, we're saying make a particle and we have to give it an X and a Y and then now a Z position and a hue. And then in my main uh, header for the Open Frameworks app, I added an easy cam, which we've seen before. So I've got a three dimensional camera so I can move around and have a look at my 3D scene in Open Frameworks and I made an OF light object, which we've seen in the 3D before. And in my CPP, my main file, just running through it quickly, we set the background color to be black. We set our hue, which is where we're keeping track of the new particles that we make, what color they should be. I set max particles and I enable the lighting. And because we're working in 3D, I enable depth test. So it checks, our program checks, what spatial order are things to be drawn in the Z direction, rather than what order are they actually drawn in the program. And then I set the position in three space of the light. So it'll be across and back a little bit. 
And then because I'm going to be making spheres, I can set the resolution, how many edges they are, how smooth the edges are. And I've set it to be four. And if you decrease this, they end up looking like diamonds. And if you increase, they get smoother and smoother and smoother. Of course, the smoother they are, the more vertices and surfaces they have, more computation. So we start with four. You play around depending upon the system and the effects that you want. In the update loop, we just said, go and find how many particles we've made. If the particles are more than the max particle, because every time I press the space key, I'm going to say, make a bunch of particles. And we could just end up making millions and millions. I said, the max particles we can have is 2,000. If uh, the particles are greater than our max particles, which you set up at the top, 2,000, you could increase it or decrease it, depending upon the performance and the speed that you've got. I just say, erase the first particle in our array of part, in our vector of particles. So as we're making new ones and sticking them on the end of the list, just saying, get rid of the first one. So our list always stays 2000 and the youngest particles shuffle down and the oldest particles get deleted. And then I just use my loop here going from I equals zero to the size of my particles vector, tell each one to update. And then they work out where are they what direction are they going in and where should they be next? And then in my draw routine, this is what I've altered from the previous example in the last video of uh, particles, is that I've said, take our easy cam and use it. So we cam begin. So now we're seeing everything in 3D and we can use the mouse or a trackpad to be able to look around up and down the left and right. And then I've just said translate the camera because the camera usually appears looking at the scene upside down and backwards. So I've translated by 180 degrees. I switch the light on. And one of the things that open frameworks can do, which helps us in this instance, because particles are flying all over the place, is to give us some reference and we can get it to draw an axis. So it's these sort of like if you use a 3D program, often it'll, you'll see the axis and it's sort of helper to help you orientate. And if I say, OF draw axis and then give it a size, it'll draw us a colored XYZ position at the center of the world so we can orientate as we look around. And the 400 just says how big or small this can be. So it can actually be a useful debug thing if you start to do stuff in 3D to work out are my particles, my objects in the right place. And then we go through each of our particles in the particles vector saying, draw them, please. And then we disable the light and switch the camera off. So far, so good. But what I need to do is generate some particles. Previously, we were just making them as we dragged the mouse around. We say, if there's a mouse dragged, make a particle. But this time I want, to happen, I want them to happen when I hit the space bar so I can hit the space bar and have a explosion of particles. So I've said in my key press routine, We've already got the toggle full screen. If I hit the space bar, so the case space bar, I'm going to make 200 particles. And then I've got a loop here saying, make me 200 particles. I use my particle class object, which I've defined in the header. So Open Frameworks now knows what a particle is. So I say, please make me a new particle to appear at zero, zero, zero in three-dimensional space using whatever my current hue is. And then I just say, push back, put that new particle onto the vector of particles. And then every time we go through the update, it'll go and have a look what particles are there, tell them to update themselves. And I've added one more thing. When I let go of the key, I'm going to say, make a new random hue. So every time I press the space key, it'll be using a different color for the explosion of particles. And when I let go, it'll update what that color will be. So let's go and have a look what we've got. Run this up full screen and you can see there is my axis. And as I zoom in and out, you can see the axis. And when I hit the space bar, it makes me these 200 particles in the loop. And then update tells them to update their position and they get acted on by a force. And every time I let go of the space key, it'll pick a new hue for them to be. 
And if I hold down the key, it'll keep doing this loop, making them all of the same color. And I can use the easy cam to look around. And if we go quite a long way away, I've got a little galaxy of exploding firework stars. And if I zoom in, you can see where they're being generated. And I can look around in three dimensions. And when I let go of the space bar, they stop and start to decay and fall down based upon gravity. And also, as we saw last time, we're slowly changing the hue as they get older and decreasing them in size. So if I hit the space key, it'll generate me all these new particles and watch them decay. And if you watch the axis in the middle, you can see I'm looking around on these exploding 3D particles. So if I were thinking of this as fireworks, I can come and see it from underneath and they come tumbling down towards me. Or I'll go and look at it from on top and it's like, I'm sitting above this explosion. So there, Russell, in response to your answer, how can I make it look like fireworks? I thought that looks a little bit like fireworks. And you could change the shape of the objects that are being drawn. You could change the forces on them. If you make it very fast, they feel a different way. You could have it so that um, for each explosion or each press of the space key, you choose a new force direction for those particles. So you could have them streaming off in all kinds of random directions, or you could keep updating where the force is pushing them so that they could get blown around in the wind. You could change the colors, all kinds of stuff. So that's super simple, quick, looking at how we take our two-dimensional particle system based upon a class and just add one more uh, variable to make a vector two into a vector three object, and we get X and Y and Z position. And then we add the forces and the directions and we trigger them off a key and we build ourselves exploding particle system fireworks. So if you like the video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave me some comments and show me what you've been building. And uh, let me know what else you'd like to see, and I'll see you on a future video in the Open Framework Super Basics series.